football from the great Northwest, Lumen Field. Designed to keep the noise in. Tannehill looking, going deep downfield for Jones. He's got it! Derrick Henry just went 60. No review needed. <laughs> Coming up on this week's Titans All Access. Extra time was needed in the Northwest, but the Titans found a way to win. The future Hall of Famer had himself a game and is this week's Nissan Insider. It'd be hard to find someone as passionate about football as John Robinson. He's here to talk ball with Mike Keith. And before the Titans were in Tennessee, the Oilers were in Texas. Sunday's game will honor the franchise's rich history. Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derek Henry. Sack! The John Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith, still basking in the glow of the overtime victory in Seattle. That was a good one. That was so much fun. But Mike, the Tennessee Titans have had a lot of overtime victories. They've had some fun ones. Which one's your favorite? Well, the two last year were pretty great. The King Cat with Derrick Henry taking the direct snap to beat Houston in Nashville. Derrick Henry's run at Baltimore to put them away in overtime. Love both of those. 2006, one of Bud Adams' favorite victories ever. Vince Young, the runoff win in Houston. And then my favorite is 2002 at the Meadowlands. Steve McNair, who was in so much pain, he didn't even come out for pregame warmups. Plays and plays great. Leads the Titans back to tie the game late. And then they beat the Giants in overtime on a field goal. That's probably my favorite for the dramatic effect of all of it. I love a good dramatic football game. And we had it. No <laughs> doubt did. about it. Titans are victors in Seattle. Here's a look at what Mike Vrabel told his team after that great come from behind win in the great Northwest. Hey, look, we talked about kicking down the door. Woo! We just got to kick, keep kicking. Right. Keep kicking, I promise you. I can't be more proud to be the head coach of this football team. Okay, that is not us in the first half. There's glimpses of it. But that, that is our identity, Darren. That right there in the second half is our identity. Yes, sir. Believe in it, practice it, preach it, demand it out of each other. Demand it out of each other. I couldn't be more proud to be your coach. Randy Bullock. Hey! I don't know what it ended with, Derek. Do do ton. And we had to have it, man. We put a lot on your shoulders. Yes, sir. Okay, we demand a lot of you. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay, but I promise you, if you fight like you did in the second half, I'll take you in any street fight, Ola. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, I will take you in any street fight, Ben, Roger, Nate, Quiz, all you guys that played up there, man. Oh, okay, Ty picking you guys' bodies up and standing eight count after standing eight count, but that war on them. It wore on him. We said not in the first half sometimes, not in the third quarter, but in the fourth quarter we had to have it. We took it right on down the field with the big fella, man. Okay, enjoy this fight home, man. Talk about your teammates. Put the team first. Ignore all the other <laughs> man. Derek, break them down, man. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. I challenge y'all, bro. And I can look in all y'all eyes, and I knew y'all wanted it, man. That's family. Family sit together no matter what happens in the game. Any adversity, we're going to come through that. I told you, if you see the play, go make it. Mm -hmm. Each and every week, that's all we got to do. One play at a time, one practice at a time. Win every day, not just every game. Win every day. Mm -hmm. We're going to go all the way, bro. Yes, we got to take it one week at a time, bro. Yes, one week at a time. Let's go, baby. Hey, Titans on three. One, two, three. Titans! Mike Keith, that fires me up just because it's Mike Brady. That's our guy. That's our guy. Well, coming up on All Access, a lot more guys, including General Manager John Robinson. He's talking ball. That's presented by Duncan. But coming up next, our Nissan Insider is... Julio. Well done, Mike. Stick around. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Someone who's pretty impressive is Titans wide receiver Julio Jones. So impressive that he just recorded his 
59th 100-yard receiving game. That's pretty impressive. What else is impressive about him is his interviewing skills. He sits down with Mike Keith on this week's Nissan Insider. Millie on my wrist, I bust it down. King in my city, wet a crown. Got a check, need another now. I can never get enough. Yeah, that's right. I can never, I can never, I can never get enough. Billy, I've been watching you play football for 15 years, and when you meet somebody for the first time that you've been watching play for that long, you, you wonder certain things. And here's what I've always wondered about you. you. Knew who you were when you were a sophomore in high school. You were a huge oh, yeah. deal. Yeah. Go to Alabama, huge deal. Go to the NFL, seven Pro Bowls. How have you always handled the pressure of being a top level player at every level? Right, um, for me, um, handling the pressure, um, there is no pressure for myself, right? I haven't been doing it for so long, like you said, you've been watching me for 15 years. It's just opportunity. You know, you gotta take advantage of every opportunity that you have. And once you're ready and you know you can put the work in, there's no pressure on you to go out there and be able to perform and go out there and do things to help the team out. From Pop Warner, you know, I had to persuade my mom to let me play football. So we went, we went like 21-0, didn't lose a game, things like that. Played in middle school, high school. Like, my whole thing is, I think, at the end of the day, is preparation, having yourself prepared and putting that pressure on yourself because nobody else can equal the pressure that you put on yourself. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's easy for you to wake up day in and day out to go out there and perform. Because I can never, I can never, right. I can never get uh. enough. So that's how you're so relaxed. Absolutely. When I watch you play, I just think, relaxed. Yeah. And everybody's focused on you, and they always have been, and yet here you are. You just go do your thing. I, I just go do my thing. Um, like I said, just preparation is, is, is the key. Get what you can get out of every day. Don't take a rep for granted, things like that, and then just give it your all. And you got also, uh, football is the ultimate team sport. I'm not out here by myself. I believe in my teammates. So for me to go out there and do my job at a high level is not for me, it's for them. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I don't want to let them down, more so let myself down. When was it in your life that you knew this could happen, that you could be this kind of player? For me, it's just, you know, one play at a time, one snap at a time, one day at a time. That's just how I live, that's how, that's how I play the game of football uh, each and every day. Tomorrow's not promised, so it's just like, like I say, I, th I just think it's no regrets. You know what I'm saying? Um, at the end of the day, don't take anything for granted because things can be taken away from you just like that. If you talk to a receiver at any level today, they want to talk to you about how they'd like to be Julio Jones. What's that like for you right now at this point in your life, knowing that kids back, middle school kids right now say, I want to be Julio Jones? It's very important, like, for me, you know, obviously to uh, uh, lead by example and do the right things, all the small things. And, but well, what I would tell a, you know, a young player coming up and things like that, yeah, you can take from my game, but be your own man. Because if you want to be me, you know, you'll be second. I, will, I want everybody to be the best version of themselves. You know, it's okay to take from other people's game and th different things like that, but you'll never be the best if you're trying to be me. You see what I'm saying? So, like, that's what I would give them coming up because, like, just the way I play the game, I just go out there and, and play to my strengths and work on all the weaknesses and, and what I would tell a young player too. If you have a weakness, if you're scared to do something, like don't, don't be scared, right? You just got to go out there and, and just do it and compete, whatever it is. If it's, you know, if it's blocking, if it's catching the ball, being aggressive to the ball, it's just like work on those little things that you are weak to and make it become a strength. Like we all have strengths, we all have weaknesses. You got to attack them. You can't, you can't shy away from them because when they come, then you're nervous, then you don't know if you're gonna make that play and different things like that. What are you most proud of in your career so far? Just the ability, uh, longevity, right? And just the love of the game. I still love the game. It's not like I do it because I have to do it. I do it because I love it. And you know, everybody, some guys can play three years, four years and be done, nine years and be done. You know, I'm going into my 11th season and like for me, like I still love the game, so I think for me, I, the way I balance football in my life is that it's still important to me and I love it. It's not like I don't feel like it's a job for me that I have to come here and work. Finally, are you surprised in any way that all of this has happened to you over the last 15 years? No, I'm not surprised at all. Like I said, there's no substitute for hard work and 
Um, what you put in is what you're going to get out of it. At the end of the day, it's just the longevity side of it. You're blessed to be able to play for this long and, and do it at a high level. But it's a lot of injuries in a lot of guys' careers and dreams and stuff like that. But I haven't been fortunate enough that I haven't had any those type of injuries and stuff like that. So um, I'm very appreciative of that. And just the teammates I've had over the years, coaching staff and different things like that, that has allowed me to play this game for so long. What's the best compliment Julio Jones has gotten or Julio Jones gets? Probably um, being a great teammate. I would say that. The Titans host a big divisional matchup against the Indianapolis Colts, but there is more happening this week at Nissan Stadium. It is Oilers Tribute Week. We will tell you more about what that means when Titans All Access returns. Titans All Access continues from the Bet MGM studio. Titans and the Colts Sunday at Nissan Stadium. It's Oilers Tribute Week, and we're really excited about that. Let's look back here. I think we've got a grip. There we go. Celebrating Fun. the Derrick and our franchise being founded back in 1960 as one of the AFL's original teams. All of the Oilers being saluted, several of them to be here. And a special moment as we will induct the most successful Oilers coach, Bum Phillips, into the team's ring of honor. And you had a chance to talk to his son, correct? Wade Phillips, exactly right. Former NFL head coach shared some thoughts on his dad and what this would mean to his entire family as Bum Phillips goes into the team's ring of honor. When you talk about him specifically as a coach, what did he know well and what did he do well as a football coach in particular? Well, he was a defensive minded coach, number one. And then he, uh, his communication skills were great, you know. A hell of a character searcher there all for right, you. Right. Hadn't let a man reach and get it. Everybody loved to play for him, you know, and they played harder for him. And that's that's a hard thing to do. What's your favorite memory of your dad as the head coach of the Houston Oilers? Well, I coached with him, you know, so, you know, all that was, I mean, I was with him for five years, so all those memories are great. But, and going to the championship game and, you know, the Earl Campbell and, and all the great players that I got to coach on defense. But, uh, but just being with that group and, and having my NFL career start that way with my dad, that was really special. A lot of people remember your dad from his sayings known as the bumisms. I, I have a feeling those came out all the time and you probably heard a lot more of those than what the public did. You know, I always accused him of having somebody write write stuff for him, but he he just it just came out. You know, good man get a man, have a good man get two. Right. What does it mean to you and your family, and what do you think it would mean to your dad that Bum Phillips is rightfully being put in this franchise's ring of honor? We we obviously loved our dad and, and honored him, but this is a great honor for him that that I think is well deserved because he won a lot of games, but he he did it the right way. Now, Mike, when we talk about this franchise's history, it really has a three-part history, doesn't it? The Houston Oilers and the Tennessee Titans are obvious, but for two years, we were the Tennessee Oilers. And to celebrate those Oilers, we take the best moment of those two years and give you a chance to relive one of Steve McNair's biggest plays. Here's Titans Radio Executive Producer Emeritus Larry Stone with the biggest moment in Tennessee Oilers history. Seeing the Tennessee Oilers in prime time during the team's first two years in the Mid-South was a rarity, which made Tennessee Sunday night tilt in Tampa, November 8th, 1998, extra special. So did the venue. The game was taking place in the all-new Raymond James Stadium. Not only did the Ray J come equipped with a pirate ship and active cannon, it was also designed by the same people who were finishing Nissan Stadium in Nashville. For NFL fans across the Mid-South, seeing the Bucks' new digs provided a glimpse of what was to come on the banks of the Cumberland River in downtown Nashville. The game unfolded in what would be a typical Tennessee Oilers style. Poorly playing one minute, then brilliantly the next. That night in Tampa, the team was lousy in the first half, falling behind 16 to three, but then rallied for 21 straight points in the second half to seize command. The Bucks countered with a late touchdown to pull within two. 
leading the Oilers the task of running out the clock. At the two-minute warning, Tennessee faced third and eight at its own 29. Make a first down, and the game is over. Fail, and punt back to Tampa Bay with the real chance of blowing a lead. Of course, there was also option three, which was narrated perfectly by broadcasting great Joe McConnell. It showed why McConnell's career on the mic had been so stellar and why Steve McNair's career was about to be. They got Roan in the backfield as a blocker. Double tight end set. And a play action. Oh, he's got to hurry. And McNair gets away. He's at the 35. He's at the 40. The 45. The 50. The 45. He may go. He's going to score a touchdown. He's at the 15. The 10. The 5. Touchdown. McNair. Oh, my goodness. They blitzed. And he broke away from a tackler who was all over him. 71 yards for the clincher. And the air just went out of this announcer and the Ray J. This play was a true NFL moment on national television. It was a Steve McNair moment. It would foreshadow Titans moments that would come very soon. On that night, November 8, 1998, a lot of people saw why Nashville and the Mid-South wanted an NFL team so badly that night at the Ray J. Oh, by the way, six days later, Saturday, November 14th, the Tennessee Oilers officially became the Tennessee Titans as Bud Adams made the long-awaited announcement about the club's new nickname. It was a pretty eventful week in the life of this franchise, the franchise now playing its 25th season in the Mid-South. Mike, I'm out of breath. Mm -hmm. It was a great moment, Ugh. no doubt about it. When we come back, time to talk ball with the general manager, John Robinson, presented by Duncan, as we continue on Titans All Access. Titans All Access continues as we talk ball with General Manager John Robinson, brought to you by Duncan. We have to start with Derrick Henry, right? 41 touches, 237 yards, three touchdowns. It built as it went for Derrick Henry. Took a while, but as it got going, it built. What led to Derrick Henry's success as the game wore on? Yeah, I mean, I think it was really a commitment uh, from Todd and his staff to stick with the game plan. You know, and certainly the line, getting on guys, sticking on their blocks, receivers, tight ends, trying to block those support players. Now, I think we finished up with 87 yards in the third quarter alone. And then that type of success really, you know, allowed us to open up the playbook and stay in the drives. You won time of possession for the ball game by almost 20 minutes. Were you even a little surprised by that? Well, a little bit, but I mean, it seemed like we had it a long time. You know, we were, we were able to get into some of those drives like I alluded to. And defensively, we came away with three three and outs there in the second half and the overtime, you know, which got, got the ball back to the offense quick, kept the defense off the field. But yeah, once we kind of got to the end of the game and we had sealed it there to look down and see that we had had it that long, pretty impressive. Ola Adani had the quarterback sack in overtime of Russell Wilson that got you the ball back and you ended up winning it from there. And a lot of Titans fans are like, who's Ola Adani? Tell us who he is and why you liked him so much coming over from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, I mean, Ola, was a, he was a rookie free agent out of Toledo. He signed with Pittsburgh. He ended up making the team every year for Pittsburgh, carved out a role on special teams. You know, that was kind of what we signed him for was you know, was the kicking game, and he's certainly been a permanent fixture in there for us. But we've slowly incorporated. He's earned some reps defensively in practice and certainly had a big one for us uh, Sunday up in Seattle. All right, let's talk about Indianapolis. Defensively, physical in the front seven. What do you like about those guys up front for the Colts? A lot of playmakers, Mike, a lot of playmakers. You know, Buckner, he's a, he's a problem in there. He's long, he's explosive. He's a really good run player, plays with a high motor. He can rush the passer. And then off the ball, you know, you got to know where Darius Leonard is. You know, if you're looking for him, usually find where the ball's at, and that's he's usually around the pile somewhere. Finally, there's no sneaking up on each other when Indianapolis plays Tennessee. Really, both teams know what they're in for Sunday at Nissan Stadium, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a division game. We play those guys twice a year. We've seen their personnel. The coaching staffs have, for the most part, remained intact. So, you know, schematically, there's a few wrinkles here and there. We know what they're trying to do, and they know what we're trying to do. Those division games are, are paramount for your success in the season, how it's going to end up in the postseason. So there's no hiding behind anything. It's going to be what it's going to be. Looking forward to it. John Robinson, thank you. Thanks, Mike. We talk ball with John Robinson every week on Titans All Access. Brought to you by Duncan. More of the show coming up right after this. 
Welcome back to Titans All Access. Mike Keith and Amy Wells continuing with the program. Oh, yes, and it's time for the best part of the show, Mike Keith's Keys. Let's do it. Let's start with stopping Indy's run game. Indianapolis, when they run their offense the best under Frank Reich, they want to run the football consistently. And with some of their questions at quarterback, you know they're really going to want to run it this week. So for guys like Rashawn Evans, Harold Landry, Kevin Byard, guys who need to play the run well, well, this is a big game for them. Stopping the run, big for the Titans defense. All right, Mike, what's the second key? Catch the ball. Oh, that's a good one. Ryan Tannehill's been throwing the ball well. The Titans have not been catching it well enough. They've dropped too many passes in the first two games. So just catch the football. If the Titans do that, I think the passing game has a chance to be effective every week. All right, key number three. All right, how about a former Colt, Chester Rogers? You know, his longest punt return in his career was against the Titans in 2018 while playing for the Colts. Turnabout's fair play, right? He's been close to doing some good things in the return game. I think if the Titans will block for him, if they'll give him just a little bit of a crease, Chester Rogers can make a big play in special teams, and you know that would be special for him against his former team. Let's block for Chester Rogers. I would love to see a big play like that on Sunday. All right, so we'll remind you that it's Oilers Tribute Week. Excited about that. Titans and the Colts Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Kickoff shortly after noon Central Time. We're on the air with Titans Countdown on your favorite Titans radio station at 11 a.m. Central. We hope you'll join us. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time.